Warren is from Mr. Will in West Virginia. It's February the 26th. I believe it is a Monday. Had a incredible weekend this weekend. My gosh, I got to play at uh, at a biker church and uh, did some worship with them. Had an incredible service at our church. And uh, just, oh, it was just one of those weekends that just flowed so wonderfully. Um, woke up this morning not so much with a word, but more of a an idea. Uh, and it has to do with belief. And for some of you that maybe don't believe in, in God, and, and I'm going to try and walk you through some things that helped me. I am someone that uh, has always studied the Bible. I have a I have a Bible. I've got it all taped up. It's so old. It's not funny, but I got this Bible back in uh, where at my hometown in New York uh, in 1964. It looks like at Rally Day they gave out Bibles to the children, and uh, I've always had this Bible. But I have a couple thoughts that I wrote in the front of it that I just realized when I took it out to look at it this morning. It says in Luke 7:50, and he said to the woman, "Thy faith has saved thee; go in peace." That was a scripture that always kind of impacted me. Uh, and then in Genesis it says, "May the Lord watch between me and thee when we are absent from one another." Um, I also have two people's names written in here that were very instrumental in my life, and one of them was my grandmother Dora. Uh, she died in 1977 of cancer, but she I had a word under her and that was keep the faith. And she was that one person in my life that I knew believed in God. And then Michael Austin, who's my favorite cousin, he died in 1977 also. Um, he had leukemia, and under his uh, under his name is Never Give Up. Um, he was a great guy. Loved him dearly. Hurt so bad to see him leave. He's one of the first people that really kind of impacted my life in a really, really positive way. He just loved me, and we loved each other when we found out that he was sick. I spent all all the time I could with him and um, broke my heart when he, when he passed. But I, I learned from him to never give up. Um, my grandmother was the one that kind of showed me faith for the first time as a child, young man. But um, for some of you, you, you may not believe, and I, I get it, I understand. I, I went for a long time. I lived in a town that had missionary college, so we had, we had Christians running around talking about Jesus. We had Jehovah Witnesses pretty strong in that area that were walking around trying to convince us to go to, uh, you know, to the Kingdom Hall and believe in Jehovah. And, and we had Muslims uh, um, that were, were, were trying to influence us and, and get us to believe in Allah. So we had a lot of different influence. So it was, it was a very confusing time, but I always, I think, believed that there was a God. Always did. I, I didn't understand him. I didn't have a relationship with him, but I knew he was there. And um, at the age of 18, I was in a car accident. And, and during that day, I felt a wrestling for my soul. And uh, thank God I am here because God somehow showed grace toward me and saved me in that car accident and also spoke to me after the accident was over. So, And that was before I even knew who he was, but he had spoken to me. And I didn't find out until later on in life when I was 22, went to the Lord, gave my heart to him and realized, and he spoke to me and said, hey, that was me in the car that night. And so I know he's real because I've had experience with him and I've had a relationship with him since that time. I'm going to walk you through what we call the Roman road. It's a set of scriptures that kind of explain the gospel in a quick way. Um, there's plenty of other scriptures that I could share, but this, these particular ones are the ones that I used to use when I was trying to walk people through the, uh, the act of salvation. Um, in Romans 3, 4, for, or, I'm sorry, 3, 10, it says, and it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. So we establish right off the bat, there's no, none of us, I don't care who you are, none of us are righteous on our own merit. Uh, Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that's why, because we've all sinned. Not one of us have gotten this thing do, uh, done in, in, a, in a right way on our own. Now we go to Romans 5. And in Romans 5, it says, 5.12, says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men that all have sinned. The sin came from Adam's original sin in the Garden of Eden. He sinned, and it, it, it was kind of like a virus that infected the whole human race. That's why we sin. Now in five Romans 5, 8, it says, But God commended his love toward us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now, you got to wrap your mind around You can wrap your mind around that and think about that all day long. While we were all sinning, even in the future, 
he was dying looking toward us as being saved by his act of going to the cross and dying for us and taking the sins of the world upon himself. It's an incredible act. Um, in, in Romans 5.5, 5, there's a scripture I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sort of digress to that, that I think is important. It's not in the original Roman road formula, but uh, it says, And the hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. I don't want anybody to, to to not go with God and not understand there's a Holy Spirit, and some of us call it the Holy Ghost because that's what it, it's referred to in the Scripture. Um, because he's kind of mysterious, you know, he's kind of like a ghost. So it's a he's the Holy Ghost, and some people call it, it's you know it's referred to as the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, you know, the third being of the Holy of, of the, the Holy Trinity. Um, I don't like to refer to them that way because I believe Father, Son, Holy Spirit are one. They all work together. One's not more important than the other. They all have their functions and they all know what they do, but they work in unison together. Um, now we go to Romans 6, 23, and it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So that's that's pretty clear. I have to explain that. Romans 10, 13, now we go to... Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let's just make it simple, people. Let's just make the whole thing about God a simple thing. It's not about church. And you know, I know some of you are different religions. I've hung out with spirit-filled Catholics, I've hung, and it was one of some of the best times I ever had. But religion is not what gets you to God. What gets you to God is simply calling upon his name and that would name would be Jesus my shirt says it's all about the grace it's all about grace all right and we and then we're going to go to revelations we kind of take a, a detour to revelations uh, in the Roman road that I learned about in revelations uh, 320 it says behold I stand at a door and knock if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Uh, I can remember when I when I finally walked down an, uh, an aisle in a little church. I was the only one that, that walked up forward that evening and gave my heart to the Lord. It was like a, the door of my heart opened up and Christ came in. It was a great time. And from then on, him and I have hang, hung out. He's talked to me. I've talked to him. You know. People make prayer a really hard thing, but you know what? Praying is just me talking to him and, 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 and me being smart enough to wait on him to talk back because God will speak to you. I know people don't believe it and they think it's kind of weird, but why would you have conversation with somebody that doesn't talk back? I mean, some of you that are married, you don't like when you're talking to your husband or talking to your wife and she doesn't respond back. That's horrible. Well, I don't talk to a God that doesn't talk back either. He speaks. you got to wait on him to talk to you back, though. Now we go back to Romans 10. And uh, in verses 9 and 10, it says that if thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Okay, so there's a couple steps here. You know, you confess, you, 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 number one, you've got to believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek after him. You know what, for years and years and years, I was a seeker. And I sought after him and, and, and couldn't find him because I was seeking in the wrong places. I, I had to really kind of get my heart right and, and, and get into the right spirit of things. Because, you know, you, you can't kind of, I mean, I had flipped through the Bible maybe. I'd gone to a church, but I didn't get it. Didn't get it until I went forward, told him that I believed that he was who he said he was, and I, I invited him in. And, I, and then after that, you start confessing that Jesus is Lord everywhere you go. I started telling people that, I, you know, I was a Christian now, and I believe that God had a son, and his son was Jesus, and Jesus loves me, and he died for me, and I have new life because of him. And it was an exciting time. You know, I, it's, it's an exciting time. Now, I want to be honest with you. I was very zealous and, and, and very just telling as many people as I could, and I lost a lot of my friends, lost a lot of my friends. Matter of fact, at that point in time, I had a relative that, that, uh, that we, we had to go part part ways because we, we were different religions, and, and what I was saying was contrary to what that person believed. But later on in life, later on, I just kept praying for people, praying for people, praying for people. And I'll tell you something, I can't remember a whole lot of people that I didn't talk to about the Lord who didn't end up following him or believing eventually in their own lives. So don't be discouraged by people maybe not listening to you. 
Now, those are, those are all the scriptures I want to share. And the thought I had as I woke up this morning was that so many people say they don't believe in God because how can you believe in something you don't see? And my first thought this morning was, like the starving children in, in, Israel, in, in Africa, you know? Like, like the surface of the moon. Like all the planets out in the universe. I have never seen them personally. Never. I've met a couple Africans. I have a couple African friends. I have two African friends that live in Africa. But, you know, I, I believe that they're starving children in Africa because I, I've, I've been told that, you know. They've told me. They've shared what they know about Africa. And, you know, you, you, you can watch the news and you can see stuff. I mean, the news has shown me the astronauts landing on the moon. Um, and you know what? The, the bad thing about it, though, is that there are other entities like movies that show you stuff that happens that's, that's not really real, but it's kind of, it's fiction. And we on this planet love fiction. And we love to believe that there are zombies and that we can kill them and that we can run from them. And, and we love the excitement of a mystery uh, or something made up. So we have all that, just like when I was a child, had all these different religions coming at me and it kind of jumbled up the truth. The truth of the matter is that I believe in God the same reason that maybe you might out there might be believing that I have a father. See, Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. If you've seen me, you pretty much see my dad because we are so much alike. You may not have ever met Willie Jr., but if you met Willie the Third, you'll know my dad. Jesus came to earth with the same mentality. If you've seen me, because they asked him, how, how can we believe that you come from God? He says, well, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And the only way to the Father is through Jesus. It's not a, a cult. It's not a crazy thought. It's not anything other than truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Much of what we do when we become Christians is about faith. Faith is believing something you can't see, but still having faith in it. I go and I flip my lights on every day. I have never, ever seen electricity, except for enlightening. But I've never seen it in my house, but I can flip the light on and the power comes on. It's the same thing with a lot of you. You need to flip the light on, You're the light of faith, and, and God's going to gonna show you some light. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that some of you will flip that switch on, that you will listen to this word, that you will go back and look at it and listen and really get it in your spirit, and that you would come to know the God of the universe through His Son, Jesus. Amen. Shalom.